All right. Thursday night, Las Vegas Triathlon Club member spotlight. I'm the president of Las Vegas Tri Club, John Mercer. We've got Bob Gamble, co-host of the spotlight. Hey, Bob. Hey there, John. Hey, folks. How you doing? Hope everybody's well. Yeah, let's. Uh, this is gonna be fun because uh, I don't know. Is it we got a distant cousin here or something that we uh, we don't know about? But <laughs> Bar Barrett and I are we're, we're brothers from different mothers. There you go. Okay? <laughs> so yeah, we we got the last name, and actually, I thought he was a uh, a a troll or or somebody spoofing me because his his handle is B Gamble, just like oh. mine. Oh, there you and, go. Yeah, so it's like I thought, what is this guy? You know, oh. and it's like I thought he was a you know, I thought he was a hacker. Well, I'm definitely outnumbered then, so that's great. Well, this is this is going to be fun because I don't know Barrett, so this would be fun, really fun for me to get to know him tonight. And uh, first thing I noticed though was his hat, which was uh, Indian Wells, and so uh, we already started chatting about that. But we we want to get to that tonight, so I'm going to turn the mic over for Bob to do the official introduction. All right, thank you, John, and uh, thank you, Barrett, for being on tonight. It's, I really look forward to talking with you and uh, the rest of the group to get to know you. Uh, for those people, just to give a quick introduction on Barrett. Barrett's had about 10 years triathlon experience and um, started around uh, 2012, and we're, we're gonna talk to him about that. Took a little bit of time off, came back, and uh, this last year, he's been with the club since uh, the middle of 2021, and um, did a couple of races. He, he took a couple of years off, had a nice hiatus, and now he's he's back and apparently he's doing really well. Um, and we'll we'll talk to him about that. But um, the one thing I uh, I wanted to I wanted to start with was first of all, thanks again, Barrett. Uh, thanks for being on and welcome. And and you've got an interesting story on and background on what your your athletics were when you first got started. Yeah. Um, as far as what sports. So tell us. Tell us about that, about your start, about and, and about how you got into triathlon because of that. Well, um, my background, actually, I grew up playing basketball, volleyball, and uh, I was extremely involved in volleyball with uh, some college volleyball and stuff like that up in Canada. Mm -hmm. And uh, how did I get into triathlon? I was actually at the World Masters Games for volleyball, and uh, I noticed I was having issues with my back. And... Uh, some lower herniated disc problem um, mm. from the, the moving of volleyball in the up and down and side to side. And I was struggling and some of my teammates were noticing that I wasn't jumping as high and mm -hmm. on and on and on. So, you know, put my stubbornness away, went to the doctor and he told me, you should probably stop playing volleyball. You're going to do some pretty, pretty good damage. Mm. And so I needed to kind of go into rehab and one of the suggestions he told me was maybe you should start riding a bike or doing some swimming or, or something like that. And I was like, whatever. So I was actually at a coffee shop right beside a bike shop. And I was like, well, maybe I'll see what a bike's all about. So I walk in and it happened to be a triathlon shop. <laughs> and, uh, you know, That's good. I walk in and the lady goes, boy, you look like a triathlete. You're tall and skinny. <laughs> and, uh, I said, it's kind of hard to be a triathlete because I don't know how to swim. <laughs> so, but uh, after talking to this lady for a little while, um, I came home and thought, hmm, this might be a good uh, change of pace. So kind of the rest is history. That, that is so, that's interesting because everybody starts in a different way. We haven't had a single person on here who was the same start as someone else. And for you to get started, you know, through volleyball and basketball and you're, you know, athletic, yeah, and, you know, and uh, and then get injured and walk by a bicycle shop, a triathlon shop, accidentally. That's that's a new one. I haven't had that. I'll, I'll be honest. When I walk, walked into the shop, I saw the prices of the bikes. I tried to turn around real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they they, they, they trapped you. Say, come on, come on, come on. It's, yeah. We have a payment plan. Yeah. So, so tell us what, you know, that was, that's how you got the bike and, and you talked to a triathlon, a triathlete or, yep. you know, triathlon shop. What was your first uh, triathlon? So, and, and where was it? Tell us about that. So I was up, up back home, up in, so I'm from Edmonton, uh, Canada, and uh, there's just a, a local sprint triathlon. And uh, the lady convinced me that I'd be ready in three months, uh, do my first sprint. And even though I didn't know how to swim and 
I'll be honest, I used my, my running brain thinking 750 meters, that's only two times around the track. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> be able to get, get Different in the water, isn't it? Yeah, so, you know, I signed up and I went to do my first practice swim in my board shorts and, uh, you know, I realized I couldn't swim more than 50 meters without wow. being exhausted and wow. uh, I panicked. Mm -hmm. So I went to a, a swim master's group and uh, Smart. I actually did my first race doing the breaststroke because I was too afraid to breathe out of the side. So mm. actually, mm -hmm. yeah, it was, it was very interesting. So you breaststroked your first um, triathlon? Yep leg yeah. well, i'm i'm one it's great to hear that 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 because other people who don't you know swim um freestyle you can still do it and i mean it actually took a lot of guts for you to do the whole race breast breaststroke when everybody else was i, I don't recommend it because your legs are exhausted <laughs> <laughs> that's right but it was for me feeling comfortable in the water and the freestyle was just too much of a panic to breathe out of the side and that's kind of what I did. And was Man, I got to applaud you for, for having the courage yeah. to do us. Yeah. I have to applaud. I have to applaud you for doing having the courage to do a swim, knowing you're going to do breaststroke the whole time. That's, yeah, I mean that's, that's pretty awesome. I never swam that far. I, I think I didn't even go above 500 meters before. So I was. It was. It was. A, it was what was so it what, like when you came out of the water? Well, actually, uh, Bob, I just want to get. Was it an open sure. water swim? No, it was actually a pool. It was a pool okay. swim, yep. and they did it uh, by heats. And since I'd never swam that far, they put me in the the slowest heat because mm -hmm. all the fast swimmers started at the you know the back end of it. Mm -hmm. And they put me in with two gentlemen that were actually worse than me. Um, one guy actually used the rope to pull himself, and the other guy did a side stroke. Mm. Um, so it was kind of an interesting race for me because all the fast ones were you know many many heats behind me. And I actually did the whole race out of the water by myself. I didn't see a single competitor the whole race because mm. I got out and then onto the bike and I rode the bike leg by myself and did the run by myself. And it's kind of interesting. Now, now at this point, I want to let everybody who's in the club know you've, you've done seven or eight 70.3s. You've done two full Ironman, open water swim Ironman. So it's not like, you know, you, it's, you know, you, you can get better. You, you have progressed. <laughs> you can get better. And you, you can get better. So that's a that's a very, very valid point there. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, so uh, now uh, let's go back to where Bob was going. So you you, you exit the swim. And, and like you said, you're you're shorter on your own at this point. Uh, what, what, what were you thinking about as you're jumping on the bike? Were you already, were you pretty comfortable on the bike at that point? No, no not at all. Um, it was actually the <laughs> second time I'd ever rode with clips. Um, oh. oh my goodness. Yeah. So uh, it was, it was interesting. Cause uh, like, I, I just like now, now in the, in the world of triathlon, you get used to cars blowing by you and yeah. Yeah. all kinds of stuff. And it wasn't a closed course. So I was out on this highway by myself. Mm. But, you know, it was, it was interesting. Um, Good grief. You had everything going on new, brand oh, yeah. new experiencing for the first time no that's, that takes a that's a that's stressful mm -hmm. and and trying to unclip was almost an embarrassment because i almost wiped out because i couldn't uh, unclip when i got to the dismount bar so yeah, yeah. it was a good time yeah this is sounding like a really good first experience this is so neat that you 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 know kept going uh after this so but now what was the let, let's jump into the run then that, that first race now you're you're struggling getting out on the clips. You get into T two and you put your running shoes on. Is this where you felt the most comfortable at that point? So yeah, typically I do enjoy the run. That's that that's something I enjoy. But it was actually something that I learned through triathlon that, and I'm still learning. Um, if you're not good on the bike. It doesn't matter how good of a runner you are because your legs are hot. So. Mm -hmm. I, I learned what cramping in the legs meant. <laughs> this is so where when, Bob's what, gonna jump in. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, what were your first steps when you when you come off the bike? How did that feel? Interesting. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it is, isn't it? I think we all we all know what that felt. <laughs> yeah. Well, and so during the run, then this is interesting. So no problems with the back at this point, though. I mean, you're you okay. you felt that was all uh, comfortable still. Yeah, I think the biggest problem with volleyball. Um, 
it's just it's in volleyball you're always jumping and when you're coming down on a straight up and down you're always going side to side or front to back mm -hmm. so running is just a constant movement so yeah. um yeah it was just mm -hmm. and i and i had i had taken a few months it wasn't that it was a straight in okay i i'd been rehabbing for about six months mm, okay good deal well and that's good that you know, you're a, you had an injury you, you, or diagnosis and then you're patient and getting into it. And I know you said, you know, you're really prepping for three months. That's still uh, really impressive. Now, so then you felt you, you finished the run and uh, yes. I don't know what you were hooked or were you like, oh, you know, wow, it, that's, I'm never um, going to do that again. But was it, no, what, 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 what was going through your mind when you finished? Um, I was kind of actually amazed that I could do all three. <laughs> no. That's great. And, and no, that's a good accomplishment. I mean, seriously. Yeah, and uh, uh, in my opinion, um, I know some people think that half Ironmans and Ironmans are hard. I actually find sprints extremely hard because it's so <laughs> fast. Glad to hear it. And I'm just not, I'm not a sprinter. So I'm, I'm a skinny Clydesdale. Um, <laughs> yeah. Now, speaking of, speaking of that, I just got to throw this in there so we don't, we don't miss it. You, you had um, recently, speaking of being at Clydesdale, you lost a ton of weight mm, um, come, coming, coming down uh, recently. Tell us about that, too. Yeah. Now we'll get back. Yeah, sure. Um, so after 2017, I did Ironman Barcelona. Mm -hmm. And uh, Barcelona is typically in the fall. I came back, and I'm, I was really happy with my Ironman, too. Um, you know, I, I would have liked to have done better, but don't we all? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I enjoyed my Barcelona race, and then I came back. At that time, I was living in Hawaii, so I did the Honolulu Marathon. Mm -hmm. And I just needed a break. I just, this was, I need to shut down. I just, my body was done. And then, you know, work and COVID and everything else, I just stopped. I completely stopped running. I completely stopped everything I'd get on my bike once in a while and do a jog once in a while, but I was done. Mm. And, uh, when I moved here, I was like, okay, you know, I'm, I'll start thinking about going into it. And I, I joined up, uh, with the Viva masters for a while, mm -hmm. um, with, uh, Ted and Marie. Yep. And, uh, it was pretty much September is kind of funny. Um, I was out eating and I opened up my fortune cookie and it said, live the life you love. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't, I, I missed doing triathlon. I missed the feeling healthy and getting in shape. And so I had coffee with Ted and asked him if he would help me. Mm -hmm. um, I was 208 pounds at the end of September. I'm now 173. Wow. Oh, that's huge. 35 pounds. That's, wow. that's fantastic. So I'm, I ate a lot better. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, and um, give give a shout out to Ted. It, it, that's a he's an outstanding um, yep. coach and, and and friend to have on your corner in your corner, isn't he? Absolutely. Even though he's from Calgary, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, so okay, we'll get the get the rivalry going. Well, this this is really quite an amazing story, and uh, that that you know this this you know shift from doing a race where. Uh, you had some challenges, and uh, then you had some success. We'll get to those in, in a bit, and then you took a break and, and had to come back again. That's really, really impressive. So going back in time now, and you finished your first race, how soon did you said, I, I want to do another one, and what distances were you looking at at that point? Because you mentioned Ironman Barcelona, which is a, a really, that looks like a fantastic race. It is. So the first uh, pretty much two years, all I did was sprints. Okay. I just didn't know enough about the sport. And I wasn't, you know, I, I joined a tri club. Um, there was a coach, um, but he was definitely not worried about the age groupers. He was more worried about the elite, young, fast. Mm -hmm. so didn't get a lot of coaching there, but I was just trying to learn as much as I could. And where, where was that, Barrett? In Edmonton. In Edmonton. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of young, fast, talented people um, with all swimming backgrounds. So I didn't fit in right away. Um, but uh, it was about two years after that. I was like, 
I, I want to do something longer. So I didn't go to the Olympic. Um, I went straight to the half and it was just the local halves up in Canada. So I did those four or five times. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, um, I got convinced in 2015 uh, to do an Ironman. Mm. And uh, they told me that Los Cabos would be a, is an easier one to go and do. Um, I listened, I listened to their, um, but coming from Canada, it's obviously more cold and yeah. lost, it's hot. Yeah. I wanted to get a little bit of heat training. So I actually went and did Ironman 70.3 in the Philippines. Oh, wow. And uh, just to experience what the heat shock was. And uh, it was about 120 degree heat difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was, but you know what? Out of all the races I've ever done, the most organized race was in the Philippines. Oh, no that's, kidding! Yeah. That's By good far. to know. Not, not even close. Mm -hmm. It was, it was a great experience. No, oh, this is neat. You so you've really done some traveling from Spain to Los Cabos to the Philippines. That that's uh, that's pretty neat. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. You get to meet you get to meet really interesting people with the same goal. Yeah. So uh, from Los Cabos, you then in the Philippines, then you did Ironman Barcelona after that. Yes. You compress this into a, a pretty short period of time. That's right. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to do this year too. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, we'll there's jump in. Go, go ahead, Bob. There, there, there's a couple of things I want to unpack there is um, you, you went from sprints to 70.3 and co compare those for me, would you please? And, sure. and, and you say you, you like the uh, longer distance better than the sprints. I do. Um, I, I, there's so much firepower in sprints, um, you know, from the swim to incredibly fast bikers, people that can go all out for a short period of time. And I, I find them incredible. I'm just not one of them. Um, You're what? Say again? I'm, I'm just not one of those, you know, go hard as I can for that long. Um, so. And I, I, I like I, hearing that because a lot of people use the term, I'm, I just did a sprint. And, and there's no such thing as just doing a sprint. They, they're they hard and they hurt. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, some people are built that way and are even mentally strong that way to be able to endure that at that rate. For, yeah. you know, and I just didn't feel comfortable with it. I just, it was, it was too much of a, a high push for me and I just felt more comfortable going at a steady pace. Good. Couple of, a couple of important things, you know, like I said, it's not just a sprint, you know, it's, it's, it is a, it's its own type of a race. And some Absolutely. people like the sprints and some people like the longer distance. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So tell us about your first uh, Ironman then your that experience. Um, it was probably one of the worst, but best days I've ever had. Oh. <laughs> uh, as we got into Los Cabos, there was actually a hurricane going through Puerto Prada and it pushed some really bad weather up into Los Cabos. Um, Los Cabos at that time was usually cooler. It was surprisingly enough, actually typically a wetsuit swim. And that's why I signed up, uh, non-swimmer, wetsuit, let's get me to float. Mm -hmm. um, but with all the warm water that got pushed up, they took the wetsuit out and the waves were just a rocking. And oh. you, gotta, you gotta remember, I'm from Edmonton where we swim in a lake sometimes when it's not too cold. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it was rocking um but i probably had the best swim of my life um it was just, I, again i'm not fast like john or anything like that i got out at 113 which is pretty good that's great yeah no that's a that's a solid time yeah and i the bike was going well cobbles is very hilly and mm -hmm. there's nothing flat um, it was out. It was a double lap out towards the airport and back. And if anyone's been there, it's a nice climb to the airport. Um, first lap went for me smooth as possible, and then I just had some back issues. Um, oh no! And it kind of reared its head a little bit, and I thought it was the worst day of my life for the second half. Mm. And I got off the bike and said, you know, I, I did everyone I knew. I was telling everybody I knew I was doing it. So my pride, my pride was saying, you're not going to quit. Yeah. Um, so I got onto the run and my arms are moving. My legs weren't really moving that fast, but my arms looked like it. And it was a struggle for 
24 miles. Yeah. And, and all of a sudden, the last two miles was probably the best two miles I've ever had as far oh. as feeling the joy of the run. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I'll be honest, I wanted my own moment. So I separated myself from the group that I was running. So I <laughs> lined up. Yeah. And uh, it was, you know, it was what, 14 hours and 13 minutes. And yeah, I felt like uh, I was, I got that, that high that I, you know, that the, the pride was, was yeah, definitely wonderful. There. Yeah, that's yeah, well, well, well deserved. Did you, did you, and you got a good finisher pick? Oh, I got lots because there was no one. <laughs> I, I think I had like a almost a two minute window. It was pretty awesome. Oh, that's good. And, I, that's and I took my time going through it too. Like it was, that's right. <laughs> well, and, and I think that that's good for people to hear. I mean, you own that finish line when you get there, and that that's yeah, yeah. to celebrate. And you can't I, nobody can take it away from you. No, no, it was pretty cool. Yeah, and then great to hear the perseverance. You know, especially with with the history of back injuries, and you start having back pains that had to make you really think twice about what to do. And so that's great that you were able to persevere. So sounds like a, a fantastic ending to that day. And so at that point, what were you thinking of doing to continuing with uh, the pursuit of Ironman or going back and doing some sprints? Obviously you, you kept going with Ironman. Part I actually I originally thought I was going to go back to just 70.3s because mm -hmm. there's just so much time put into an Ironman. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, there's still a lot of time put into a 70.3, but mm -hmm. you can get away with them a lot less. Mm -hmm. And then uh, a friend that I went down with to Los Cabos uh, convinced me, let's do one more. Oh. And then uh, we wanted a destination, so we picked Barcelona. Oh. And uh, that was kind of our, our nugget to go chase. Mm -hmm. And then but Barcelona is a fantastically it's a great course. And if you're a cyclist, a biker, you're going to be fast. Yeah. Like fast. And yeah. Europeans know how to ride a bike. Yeah. And draft. I mean, there's no drafting, but I'm just saying. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. A beautiful city and, and yeah, wonderful bike course. I haven't done that, that race, but it looks, looks fantastic. Yeah. So, so what do you got lining up now? What's lined up for 2022? Okay. Well, I got a pretty good year coming. Uh, we got Oceanside. Um, was that four weeks? Yeah, April second. Yeah. Oh. yeah, And then I'm gonna swim with the sharks at Alcatraz. Love it. You're doing the uh, the swim part. Yeah, that I do that. Love no, it. I'm doing it. You'll you'll enjoy it. That'll be great. Yeah. So I'm gonna do Escape from Alcatraz. That's June. And then I got Oregon in July. Good. And then I'm actually gonna go back to Barcelona. Um, oh, awesome. Yeah, I signed up, got that one in October. Then I want to see how I do again in Indian Wells. Yeah, oh, that's great. Well, okay, going back to Alcatraz, that is an, uh, that is an amazing uh, <laughs> challenge to take on, given the story you told of getting started in swimming. That's what made you seek that one out? Uh, I think it's a little bit of craziness. Um, <laughs> part of it is just bucket list. Um, I want to know that I can do it and I'm going to put the fear of the water away. Yeah, that is great. And that's, that's cold water. It's rough water and there's currents in there. And yep. yes, there are, I, I've never verified this, but I understand that one of the rituals of Alcatraz is they, there's always an attorney or a lawyer that is, you know, one of the competitors and they, they send them out 50 yards, turn around and come back to establish professional courtesy with the sharks. There you go. Yeah, is that true? I've, I've 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 heard that. I don't know if it's true or not. I don't know, Bob. Are you 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 telling a joke? Is that what you're doing? No, no. I've heard that. I've heard that. that, that that's part of Alcatraz. I All I so. know is I'm my my plan is not to be last yeah. and not to be first. Just yeah. somewhere be in the middle. That's right. That's right. Oh, I love it. That's great. Well, that is a a nice full schedule there of Oceanside, Oregon, a couple of seventy point threes, and in, in, uh, Barcelona. You're going to do any of our club races, do you think, or you got a full um, schedule to start with? I realize that there's probably, I think there's one in the fall um, that I'm going to be doing, but I'm actually kind of excited that my 18 year old son has decided to go into triathlon and he will be doing some of your races. Oh, that's cool. Awesome. That is great. Oh, so does he train with you? Uh, he's a little too good for me. <laughs> 
he uh spoke same, like same thing that same, same thing is uh he doesn't have a swim background so he's mm-hmm. just getting into the pool yep. but he can bike he's actually a sponsored rider by bike brain oh wow good deal sponsored by who bike brain oh, okay mm-hmm. so he so well, he um, must be fast yeah so he's actually getting coached by luigi oh there you go another good coach <laughs> Oh, that's great. So that's the, so of all these places you've gone to, mm-hmm. Philippines, Los Cobos, Barcelona, Edmonton. <laughs> uh, what, did, you, did you do Calgary 70.32? Is that, oh, no. no. No, I didn't do that one. It's Calgary. There's okay. no reason. Yeah. <laughs> no, so, it's just the main reason I didn't go to Calgary is just I just didn't like the course. Yeah, 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 it, and I, I don't know, are they still have, I, I'm not even sure if they still have that on the schedule now, but I don't know. It's changed so many times. All right, so of all those places, what, what has been your favorite destination race? Good question. Oh, it, okay. It's very, very clear. It's Barcelona. Mm-hmm. See, it's different. It was, you know, the Philippines it really opens up your eyes to mm-hmm. the rest of the world. Um, you kind of take for granted where you live. Yeah. And then you go to the Philippines and you really appreciate what you have. Mm-hmm. Um, beautiful people, um, like probably some of the kindest people like, that you'll ever meet. That's why I'm saying as far as the organization, hands down the best. Yeah, uh, They cater to the triathletes better than I've ever seen. Mm. And, and just fantastic people, even on the, the race course, everything. Uh, I yeah. still actually, a couple people that I met during the race, I actually just talked to one of them last week and oh, that was great. five years ago, six years ago. Yeah. Oh. So, but Barcelona, it's just, Spain's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. So you, you, you know, I'm thinking of your story here and you started off in triathlon because of an injury. Mm-hmm. Then uh, you did some fantastic racing and then you took some time off and then you, you gained some weight and then you had to come back from that. So you've sort of had these sort of two careers so far or sort of entries into triathlon. Thinking back, what advice do you give to people starting off in, into, into the sport? Um, I, two things, get a coach. Mm-hmm. Um, this is probably the first time I've actually dealt really with a one-on-one coach. Mm-hmm. Um, now, my, now my training is focused. Um, yeah, there, I, if you don't have a coach and even if you go online and you know, I tried all that stuff, a coach, I don't want to use the word accountability because mm-hmm. you have to be accountable to yourself. But if you have a really good coach, they help, you know, if you're having a bad week, you tell mm-hmm. your coach and you, you change up your plan. Um, you know, so I'd say get a coach. Uh, second thing is, is it doesn't really matter. I don't know how to. In simple terms, you get the same medal as the person in fourth place. Yeah, yeah. Um, so go out and enjoy it because mm-hmm. it's the people that you meet that you get to share the war stories. Mm-hmm. And that's the fun part. Mm-hmm. Like it, nobody ever really remembers who finishes in second or third. Mm-hmm. And, and the time is, is uh, the time, time is irrelevant to finishing right now. You know? Exactly. Like, you know, man, now, now I get to be healthy again, or I'm working on being healthy again. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's about a lifestyle. Oh, I love it. So when you told the start line now in 2022, how, how has your mindset changed from when you started the sport? Um, you know, I, I would say that it's just a confidence knowing that you can complete it. Mm-hmm. You might have a great day, you might have a bad day, but at the end of the when it's all said and done, you will finish. Mm-hmm. And that, oh, that's, it. it's, you know, it takes a little bit of the nervousness. Of, like when I did Indian Wells, I hadn't done a race in almost four years. Mm-hmm. I was nervous, but I also had this calm knowing, just get through it. You yeah. know, no. it's going to be, it's, it's, it's going to be a journey. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's great. Well, I love this. And I really like what you said earlier, you know, live the life you love. And I think that that sort of wraps up what you're talking about now mm-hmm. in terms of just enjoying the sport and, and, and enjoying the lifestyle. So mm-hmm. Barrett, this has been so good to get to know you and I'm glad our paths crossed and I hope we cross again. And if we do Indian Wells together again, you'll have to stop by the campsite next time. Absolutely.
<laughs> yeah, well, I look forward to riding with you again out at uh, Corn Creek. We should we're gonna, we're we're going to be doing that soon in in March. Yeah, I saw that. I'm sure my coach will probably sign me up for that day. Oh yeah, he'll he'll be there actually. <laughs> it's it's his fault. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he turned us all on to Corn Creek yeah. course. Absolutely. Barrett, thanks so much for joining us. This has been great to get to know what, what you've Excellent. done in getting into the sport. It's really, really, really neat. Thank you. Okay. Yep, thanks, thank, thank you. Thanks for being thanks on. And uh, thanks for taking the time to talk to us. You bet. All right. See ya.